Traditionally, many of the, the horses, they were treated as family. You know, these were, these were four-legged brothers. I can't even remember when I first got on a horse. I seen an old photo of me sitting on a horse and I just, uh, I was probably only about two or three years old. The main thing was to, to me was to talking to them and, and Nez Perce. And when you get to talking to a horse and Nez Perce, they seem like they understand quicker. Uh, there's so much about the Appaloosa that can't be separated from the Nimipu story. And once you start learning more about the Appaloosa, you learn more about the, the Nespers and vice versa. I think, you know, if tribe members continued the resurgence of the Nespers horse, I think it also going to be an educational opportunity for not only people in this local community and this nation, but worldwide. I'm James Spencer, the Nez Perce Tribes Young Horseman Project, and we're here in one of the five horse pens. We're with the stallions, and uh, this here's Riz. He's a Appaloosa horse uh, that was donated to the tribe a few years ago, and uh, we have a Nez Perce horse here, and uh, here's an Akalteki stallion, Morning Star, and. Uh, the Nespers horse is a cross between the Akalteki and the Appaloosa. Hey there, Riz. So we probably received the horse in this area somewhere around 1700. I could attribute it earlier because of the Pueblo Rebellion in 1680. It had only taken a couple of decades. It would have been up in the Northern Plains. The uh, Nespers tribe Nimipu people, the name we call ourselves, um, we do have a historical connection to the Appaloosa. Probably in the 1700s and into the 1800s, it was, it's not exactly known how, how the breeding began, but uh, the Nespers people did selectively breed horses. Our horses were well suited for this part of the country. They could climb in and out of these canyons with ease and in 1877, the U.S. military found out how superior our horses were. They just couldn't keep up with the Nez Perce. Well, the Nez Perce War of 1877, which began in the Wallawa country, Joseph and other bands were being forced to move on to the 1863 reservation. And when they were, were moving, uh, they were given a strict timeline and they had cattle and they had you know, many, many horses that they were trying to move at that time. And our chief gave up his rifle and said he wasn't going to fight anymore. They took all our horses away and they separated us and sent part to Washington and Oregon and some here. So they was afraid that we'd <laughs> start another riot, I guess. I don't know. That's history for you. In 1995, the Nespers tribe reinstitute the Young Horseman program. And when we first initiated that program, it was for the young people in our community. Through those efforts, the children not only learn about their culture, but they do get interested in horses. And then they'll keep the horse culture alive among the Nespers people. Our intent was to bring the Nez Perce horse culture back to the tribe because it was taken away from us. There's a lot of uh, tradition and values uh, revolving around the horse. The um, director at the time wanted to see what would happen with a, a, a you know, crossbreeding with an Appaloosa. He's the one that would start breeding the Appaloosa horses and the Akalteki horses made a good horse. The Nez Perce horse is a cross between the Akalteki, which is an endurance horse from Turkmenistan, and the Appaloosas that we know here today to develop this new breed to create a highly desirable horse that everybody would want to own. Oh, 
All the animals are like our brothers and sisters. We all have the same color blood. If you can interact with an animal, you can also interact with a human. You see the world in a different way from the back of a horse. 